Hey everybody, my name is Clyde, and recently Wargaming announced that there are going to be some changes to the commander skills coming to World of Warships in update 12.10. At present, we're just a few days away from 12.9 landing on the server, so that means that we've got about a month or so to ponder these changes and make a strategy before they arrive a little bit later on in November 2023. Wargaming has said that they wanted to update the commander skills for destroyers, cruisers, and battleships, both based on player feedback, but also statistical analysis that indicates that some of the skills were unpopular, underperforming, or maybe even just a little bit outdated with where the game is today. As you'll see, in general, most of the skills that we're going to talk about today have received buffs and not nerfs, so that kind of fits Wargaming's narrative. After all, they want to make these skills more attractive to players so that we'll choose them more often, and that's good for us. There may be a couple of changes in here, of course, that are perceived as negatives for some of your builds, and I'll make sure to call those out as we go along. The goal, of course, of this is to increase build diversity. If they make these skills tempting enough to take, but not so powerful that they overshadow our current favorite skill selections, it could really produce a variety of commander builds for a single ship out there in the World of Warships community. Many players have been curious about whether or not we'll be able to respec commanders for free as a result of this change, and the answer is yes. Wargaming included a note in the dev blog that says that there will be a 100% discount on commander respecs for a limited time when 12.10 hits. Historically, sometimes we've seen this period be less than the complete patch duration. So we're going to want to be paying attention when we get more details on this so that we don't miss our window for free captain respects, just in case it's not the entire patch. I've included a link to the dev blog in this video's description, and you can go read up more on this topic on your own if you'd like. In several places in this video, I'm going to refer to the WoWs builds. And what this is is a Google Doc that provides recommended commander builds for top tier ships, tier 10s and super ships, as well as a lot of the premiums that are in the game. This document's put together by some fairly skilled players, and I kind of use it in this video as a yardstick or a meter stick to measure the popularity of the different commander skills in the community today. If you're interested in this document, I've got a link to it in the video description, as well as a link to this video, which tells you about all of my favorite online tools that help you be a more informed World of Warships player. Why don't you check them out? Might find that they're really helpful for you. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about our first commander skill change. Today, Consumables Specialist reduces the cooldown time of a limited set of consumables by 10%. Unfortunately, that subset of consumables is either very rare or simply not that valuable for your gameplay. And I guess that kind of makes sense because this skill only costs one point for destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. To make this skill more desirable, Wargaming expanded the consumables that it applies to, but kept it from being too powerful for the cost by reducing the amount of benefit you get from a 10% cooldown reduction to a 7.5% cooldown reduction. Now, for the first time ever, ships of Hydros and Radar can finally take advantage of this skill. And it provides a really nice boost, allowing you to use those consumables more often during a battle for just one commander point. Smoke consumables will now also be affected by this skill, and that's a nice boon for destroyers, Italian ships, maybe the British and Commonwealth cruisers, just to name a few. Unfortunately, for fans of main battery reload booster or torpedo reload booster, this change means that you used to get a 10% buff, and now you get a 7.5% buff. And personally, I only pretty much ever took this skill on ships that had a main battery reload booster, maybe a torpedo reload booster, so frankly, that part kind of sucks. Another benefit is that the Jetland Brothers, the German seasoned commanders, have an enhanced version of this skill, so in a way, it's actually buffing those seasoned commanders. Historically, the skill only applied to consumables that just don't exist on German ships, like Torpedo Reload Booster, or weren't that important. And that made the Jetland Brothers basically, no, not basically, legitimately and literally the worst seasoned commanders Wargaming has ever released for World of Warships. Now that this skill applies to more consumables like Hydros and Smoke, these guys are going to be a lot more relevant to the ships that are in their nation, and for fans of German ships, that is a really good thing. And this special commander buff is not just limited to the Jutlands, it also affects the United Kingdom's Dunkirk brothers, as well as the Soviet Union's Kuznetsov. These guys also have an enhanced consumable specialist skill, and so it's a buff to them as well. Now, despite nerfing main battery reload booster, overall, I think this is probably a decent change as this skill will now apply to a lot more ships than it used to. And so for anybody who winds up with a free point at the end of the build and you just don't know what to do with it, consumable specialist is no longer a terrible choice. And it was kind of often a terrible choice in the past. Preventative maintenance is an incredibly popular skill for destroyers and an occasionally selected skill for battleship captains. The new version is going to add 15% more health to AA and secondary mounts for these two classes. 
Now, given how popular the skill is for destroyer captains already, it doesn't seem like Wargaming needs to do anything to make it more picked, I guess, by those players. However, maybe what they're trying to do here is decrease the degradation of AA gun performance for destroyers over the course of the match. This skill is basically recommended in almost every single destroyer build in the WoWs builds document, and I use it on all of my destroyers pretty much as well. The buffs to AA and secondary mount health are great for battleships because they're these big slow targets and they get constant HE spam from cruisers, gunboat destroyers, conquerors, and HE bombs from aircraft carriers that can degrade AA mounts of a battleship over the course of the battle, leaving them less and less able to defend themselves against enemy air attack. The unique commanders Yamamoto Isoroku and Gunther Luchens also get a buff from this, as well as the seasoned commanders Vasily and Viktor Znamensky because these guys have an enhanced version of preventative maintenance that in the future will grant an extra 5% health to AA and secondary mounts. That's pretty cool. I was talking with Skata about this and he reminded me that back in version 0.9.0, Kremlin took a 50% health nerf to its AA mounts. And a lot of commanders might remember that. And if they feel like they suffer at the hands of CVs, they may choose to add this skill to their builds if it's not integrated already. All in all, I think this is a nice buff that'll be enjoyed by a large number of players, but I'm not sure how much more the skill is going to be chosen after the patch than it is right now. While I think we might see a slight uptick in battleship adoption of this skill, I don't think it'll be dramatic, and I don't think it's going to affect the popularity of the skill for destroyers because it's already kind of a must-have skill for those platforms. This really feels more like a small game balance buff that's designed to ever so slightly reduce the influence of a CV when dropping destroyers or even a battleship late game that just happens to be coming in the form of a commander skill change. Super Heavy AP is a three point skill that gives you a 7.5% bump in AP damage at the cost of 25% longer floods and fires. I came to battleships from destroyers and cruisers, and honestly, because of that, I really hate this idea. I don't take this on my battleships. But I'm also not the world's foremost expert on battleship play, and certainly not the expert on battleship commander builds. Because of this, I checked out the WoWs builds doc to make sure, and the BB chads over there recommend this skill for exactly zero builds. Wargaming has recognized this, and in order to make it more palatable, has added a damage reduction of 10% to fires and floods. So you'll still burn or flood for more damage than you would have without it, but the damage you'll take will be slightly reduced. Let's take a look at an example. With the current version of the skill, if a fire would burn you for, say, 10,000 damage, now it's going to last longer and burn you for a total of 12,500 damage. With the new version of the skill, all of the fire damage is reduced by 10%, even the first 10,000, right? So in the above example, you'd actually burn for the full duration, 125% of a normal fire, but you'd only take 11,250 damage, not the full 12,500. It's also important to remember that you still have damage control party, which affects how long these fires burn. You don't have to let them run the full duration. If you had that 10,000 damage fire, but you put it out after taking 7,000 damage, with this skill in place, you'd have only taken 6,300 damage if you put it out after the same number of seconds. In other words, the extended duration of a fire doesn't have to affect you, but the 10% damage reduction benefit always affects you, if that makes sense. Sometimes a fire or a flood is going to be out of your control. If your DCP is down or if you're just getting lit up by two drakes and a conqueror and you can't escape, I still don't think I'd want to take this skill, but I don't think it's altogether terrible anymore. Plus, it's got some interesting tie-ins to the Furious skill changes that we're going to talk about a little bit later. If I look at my top tier battleship builds, I'm really not sure what I would give up in order to choose this one. Maybe basics of survivability? That skill reduces your fire and flood durations by 15%, as well as restores broken modules 15% faster. Instead of reducing the duration using basics, you just cut the DPS of the damage over time, which could have a similar effect on your ship's survivability. But you would be throwing away the module restoration benefit. I don't know, it's kind of tough. Hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think. Improved repair party readiness is not recommended for any build in the WoWs builds document, except for the Montana leg mod build, where it is swapped out for basics of survivability because the legendary mod kind of does what basics does already. Honestly, I don't have any idea who would take this skill on the regular. The way that it works is that the first time you earn 100% of your ship's base HP as potential damage, you get a hull repair cooldown buff of less than one second for ships that have a standard 80 second reload. Sounds pretty weak. It does get a little bit better. If you earn another 100% of your hit points as potential damage, it does it again and again. 
and again. So that if you take a million potential damage on a ship that has 100,000 base hit points, you now have an 8% cooldown, which saves you 6.4 seconds on your whole repair cooldown time. I guess that's kind of cool, except that I always imagine that by the time that happened for me, I would have already used a couple of my whole repairs anyway, and it's sort of a little bit of a too little too late thing, and it's just something I don't think I could comfortably rely on. The new version of the skill tries to help out with this problem by giving you one more charge of a whole repair when you hit get this 3 million potential damage. Why? You're probably already dead. I will say that the one time that the new charge pops into your inventory and you use it at the last possible second, it will probably be one of the most exciting games of all time. But most of the time, you will already be dead. 3 million is just a lot of potential damage. It's a lot, and it's even more the lower tier your ship is, right? In terms of how much damage you think you can take. Now, maybe I'm crazy on this one. If you guys think I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm missing something and, and you guys can help teach me, but I just don't think this change is gonna tempt anyone into using this skill if they weren't using it already. Focus fire training makes sense for a subset of cruisers and battleships with the emphasis being on those which are hybrids like Tone here, Issei, Kearsarge, Louisiana, or the Dutch cruisers such as D7P or Haddon Leu, which benefit from the boost to their airstrike preparation time. The only non-hybrid, non-Dutch cruiser or battleship in the WoWs builds dock that was recommended this skill was Plymouth, which in and of itself is not a very popular ship, even though she's clearly awesome. You guys know I love a project. I know I can fix her. The new changes boost how quickly your airstrikes and tactical squadrons reload over the old version of the skill. This includes your ASW airstrikes for those of you who are concerned about submarine attacks as well. Today, when you activate your AA focus fire by hitting the tilde key, the attacking squadrons that are within your AA range instantly take 3.5% of their total health as damage. The new version of the skill pushes that up to 5%. While I do use this skill on some of my non-hybrid ships, it's never one that I feel strongly about keeping for any build that doesn't launch planes on its own. While the Dutch Season Commanders Klaas Jansen and Michel de Reuter have an enhanced version of this skill, it only boosts priority sector reinforcement, which is untouched by the changes planned for 12.10. As a result, you may be more likely to use this skill on a Dutch cruiser now, but the proposed changes don't buff the commanders in and of themselves. Overall, I think this skill gets stronger for hybrids and Dutch cruisers, but I'm not sure that it's going to win over any new customers. Wargaming is looking to restyle the enhanced torpedo explosive charge skill for cruisers to be more of a jack-of-all non-main battery trades type skill. So much so that it has tentatively renamed the skill to Secondary Armament Specialist, although they did provide a note indicating that this was not likely to be the final name of the skill. While we have a lot more torpedo-focused cruisers in the game than ever before, this skill just doesn't get a lot of love from the community. Instead, players take skills like Priority Target, an insanely popular skill for two points that lets you know how many enemy ships are targeting you. I personally tend to lean on consumables enhancements, not to be confused with consumable specialists that we talked about earlier, because it extends the duration of my hydros, radars, engine boost, and smoke generators, which are some of my absolute favorite consumables for the cruisers that are equipped with them. Wargaming plans to tempt us away from our two-point skill favorites with a 20% secondary range increase for cruisers. I think for ships like Napoli, which not only have incredibly accurate secondaries, but also long range and very usable torpedoes, this becomes almost a no-brainer type choice. Ships like Schroeder have a lot of secondaries, and they're pretty good, but not quite as accurate as those on Napoli. But that could still be fun, because it would have a 12km secondary range and a 10.2km detection range. I do think that some players are going to hail this as some sort of second coming of secondary cruisers, and I caution you that this skill will be a very poor choice for some cruisers, despite the fact that maybe they can lob a secondary shell a very long distance. Ships like the recently released Shill, for example, not a secondary cruiser, but with this skill, we could push her secondaries out to a 10 kilometer range. But at 10 kilometers, Shill's secondary battery, at just 10 kilometers, mind you, has a horizontal dispersion distance of 600 meters. 600 meters. Let's compare that with Napoli at the same range, 240 meters of horizontal dispersion, right? So it's way, way, way inaccurate to push Shill's secondaries out there. And this is not unique to Shill, 
Napoli's accuracy is actually the unique piece. Most cruisers are terrible at accuracy as their secondaries gain any sort of range. This reduces the hitting DPM of Shill's secondaries at 10 kilometers to 18,220 damage, which is a paltry sum compared to the 89,030 damage per minute you can get at that same range out of the Napoli. If you're going to consider this skill, I think it could be a very fun one, but I do highly recommend that you do some research and you understand the accuracy of your secondaries before you just respec all of your cruisers to have longer range secondaries. Because at that point, for a lot of those boats, they're just fireworks. They don't do any damage. They're just fun to watch. Furious just got quite a bit better and now applies to more battleships than ever before, but at four points, it's still a very expensive skill to add to any build. Typically, this skill was only used for super heal battleships that could handle being on fire for long periods of time. These builds rely on the massive healing potential of a ship like Conqueror, for example, that'll keep you alive while you allow one or more fires to burn, which in turn boost your DPM and add dispersion to the incoming shells from your enemies. This new version of Furious is both buffed and nerfed over the original. Gone is any sort of dispersion buff, and in its place, the new version of the skill offers a first fire DPM buff that is twice as good as it was in the old version. It's a common practice for battleship players of all nations to let one fire burn, even if the ship doesn't have a super heal. Given that this is such a standard operating procedure, if you will, Furious now makes sense on a lot more battleships, but only if you can afford to spend four captain points, and that part is a little bit harder to swallow. I'm not sure that it'll shake up the long-standing traditional battleship builds that we've had for years, but it's certainly worth considering for more ships than it was historically. An interesting combination would be to take Furious alongside the new version of Super Heavy AP shells for three points. Starting in 12.10, that skill will reduce the amount of damage taken from fires like we discussed earlier. If you combine these two skills, the fires on your ship are going to last longer, they're going to do less damage, which is going to activate Furious, which is going to reduce the reload time between salvos of those super heavy AP shells that do 7.5% more damage. So your DPM is going up not only because your, your shells do more damage, but you're also reloading more quickly. It's a lot to take in, but all told it could be quite potent when all cylinders are firing. The problem with this combination is that it costs a total of seven commander points, which really puts a damper on the rest of your build if you weren't already planning on taking these skills. What do you leave behind? Fire prevention? Concealment? That extra charge of hull repair that is provided by emergency repair expert? I mean, is it really worth it? Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm curious, but I am not convinced. This one is gonna take a little experimentation, I think. Dazzle feels like one of those skills that I think a lot of people tried and then immediately respect away from, though I don't have any data to back this up. Maybe you're a hardcore Dazzler. Well, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, Gunboat builds got Fearless Brawler, and I think Dazzle is supposed to be the companion skill to help out our stealthier ship friends so that they can stay hidden. The original skill added 20% more dispersion to shells fired at your ship for 15 seconds after you got spotted. So if you got surprised, or if you took a risk, you'd have a chance to kind of dance and dodge and escape. I never took this skill because it cost four points, which feels very expensive, and it felt like I was asking RNG to save me rather than boosting a parameter of the ship that I could control myself so that I could just save myself. Now, in addition to the dispersion bonus, the new version of the skill is gonna give you an 8% speed boost as well for that same 15 seconds right after you get spotted. The change is a straight buff. There are no new penalties, there are no nerfs here. So say I'm in my Holland, a destroyer that has no smoke, and I get spotted briefly near the edge of my detection range. With the new version of Dazzle, my enemies will have a harder time hitting me for the first 15 seconds, and my speed will also jump from 36.8 knots in my build to 39.7 knots. If I hit my speed boost, I can reach a speed of 42.9 knots, which might be enough for me to dance and dodge my way back to being unspotted. It's a way more interesting skill with this change, though I don't know if it competes with the other four point skills that are available for destroyers like Radio Location and Swift and Silence or Main Battery and AA Expert. It kind of depends on your build. And really, there's no way that this is going to unseat Concealment Expert, so that's just kind of a non-starter. Let's talk about our last skill, AA Defense and ASW Expert. 
This is a two point skill for battleships and a four point skill for cruisers. This skill is infrequently recommended on the WoWs builds dock due to the fact that it costs a lot and there is a perceived if not actual difficulty in creating a satisfying AA build in World of Warships today. Even though it is found on the dedicated AA build for Wooster, which is probably pretty butch. Despite only costing two points for battleships, WoWs builds doesn't recommend this skill for any battleship build in the entire document. I've taken this skill a time or two, but I don't find myself reaching for it very often either. The change really boosts the amount of continuous AA damage for both battleships and cruisers, and also buffs a portion of the skill that most people don't think about too often. When you're running this skill, if your AA guns are actively firing, your consumables are reloading faster. So it's not all the time, it's just when the guns are shooting, but when that's happening, your radar is coming back faster, your hull repair is coming back faster, your smoke is coming back faster. The buff to this portion of the skill is actually pretty substantial, especially if your ship tends to be forward deployed and if you div with a friend who plays CV very frequently. I'm not sure this is earth shattering, but paired with a general boost to the AA capability of the skill, and at least the cheaper battleship version of this skill looks like it could be a nice boost as long as you can afford it in your build. But I don't know that this is going to really change the way that people think about this skill. Let me know in the comments if you guys think this one is going to be more likely to be chosen by you. So that's it. Just kind of a brief rundown on each of the skills that are changing here. I hope that you found this illuminating. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you've got new questions. If you do, put those down in the comments. I'll try to answer them if I can. If you liked this video, watch other videos on the channel. You'll probably like those too. And of course, you can come hang out with us for the live show, which we do three times a week at twitch.tv slash Clyde Plays Live. We've also got a Discord you can join if you want to keep the conversation going between streams and YouTube videos. We'd love to have you join us there. Until we see you next time, please take care of each other. Be cool, be nice. And we'll see you in our next video battle or live stream. See you guys. Actually, fairly substantial to that astro... Astribute? What's an astribute? Better not have anything to do with butts. <laughs>